one of the most unique things about moving to Murrieta, Temecula, other than the amazing location, the great amenities, and all the things to do here is property taxes. This is probably one of the most misunderstood things, and this is actually one of the first things that I talk with any first time home buyer here in the area about, is your property taxes. They can vary greatly. Today I wanna to break it all down, give you the ins and the outs, and even some ways that you can transfer your old property tax to a new property. Let's dive in. Hey guys, I'm Andrew Lewis, your local Temecula Valley Realtor. Today, as I mentioned, we will be breaking down the ins and the outs of Marietta, Temecula, property taxes, what are Melarus assessments, what are special assessments, how can you transfer property tax basis, I wanna break it all down for you, help you save some money in your monthly payment. Let's discover it all together. So what are property taxes? If you're a first time home buyer, you're probably even wondering what we're talking about. If you've owned a home before, you've probably seen it. But when you buy a home, you are taxed on an annual basis for the tax on the home that you've purchased. So if you have a $600,000 home, every year they assess a tax bill to that property that you have to pay. Now don't worry, typically you're not having to write a check to the county for that. It's usually rolled into your monthly payment most lenders will actually require this, but some will let you pay it outside of that. So if you're an experienced home buyer, go ahead and you can pay it outside of that so your monthly payment is lower. However, at the end of the day, you're still going to be writing a check to the county assessor. So property taxes in general, they're gonna take the basis of the property, the land value, as well as the structure value, bring those two together to assess the actual current value of the property, and that is what you will be paying tax on. Now, the number one question is that everybody asks, how much will I be paying in those property taxes? Well, those property taxes are broken down in a few different ways. You've got the base tax rate along with special assessments in Melarus that will get added on top of that. So let's start with the base tax assessment, the tax rate that you will be paying. That is in this area, anywhere from 1% to 2.4%. Now that may not sound like a huge range to you, but there is a 1.4% swing in that price. Now, if you're having a $600,000 purchase here in the area, that means your payment could sway $6,000 or more per year. So that is a huge, huge number. It's very important that you work with a local real estate agent that knows the low tax areas, when assessments will fall off, how you can save some money when it comes to that property tax because it will affect your monthly payment. And I've seen it way too often where a buyer buys a property, they were not aware of the property taxes, and the lender doesn't even know until the very end and a buyer goes to sign those papers and they realize their payment is several hundred dollars higher than they thought it was going to be. So make sure you're working with a local expert that can break it all down for you. So why do the tax rates vary so much? As I mentioned, from one neighborhood to the next, it can be a huge, huge difference. That is because of special assessments in Melarus. So you've probably heard those terms before. The base tax rate for all of Riverside is 1.04%. When I say Riverside, I mean Riverside County. That means just the base tax, everyone is going to be paying 1.04% tax. Then on top of that, they tack on special assessments or Melarus fees. Those are basically tied to infrastructure additions to the area. Those are going to be for things like schools, roads, fire departments, Anything that has helped to, to develop the area and grow the area, parks, public parks, things like that, that's money that you're paying towards that. So some people feel like this is just extra money that you're giving to the county. However, it is actually broken down in the tax bill to go to specific funds to pay for those specific things. Now, each different neighborhood, depending on where you're located, is going to pay into different funds for different areas. If you're in a more developed, older area that already has established schools, fire departments, roads, all of that, you're not gonna be paying as much in the Melarus department or the special assessment department because those things have already been paid for. If you're in a newer area that is less developed, and we do have areas like Winchester or French Valley that are less developed but are being built up very, very quickly, those cities don't have funds yet for some of those infrastructure things that they need to put into place. So what happens? The tax bill makes up for that. And so every newer community that is being built has a higher tax rate because they're having to pay for some of those infrastructure pieces that are being put into place. And that will show up on your tax bill. A little rule that we like to say here is that the taller the trees, the lower the tax bill, meaning it's an older neighborhood, more established, 
those things have already been paid for, but the smaller the trees, the higher the tax bill. That's typically those brand new trees, they stick in front of a new construction home, you're usually gonna have a bit higher of a tax bill because you're going to need to help to develop the entire area by schools and infrastructure, things like that. So if you're moving to a newer area, be aware that those taxes might be a bit higher. Now let's talk about, do my property taxes increase every single year? The short answer, yes, they do. Some states, not California, actually reassess the value of your home every single year. If your home went up by 20%, so does the assessed value of your home, and then you are being taxed on that number. The great thing for the state of California, Prop 13 was put into place. That limits the increase on the value of your home to just 2% a year. Now the average appreciation for California is 5% a year, meaning that typically the new assessed value of your home every single year will not actually keep up with the real value or the Zestimate, those things that you might see when you're looking up your home's value. That is great news because it keeps your tax bill low. Imagine being a homeowner in the state of Texas where your home went up by $100,000 that year and you're now being taxed at 2%. You've just added a massive amount to your tax bill and people can actually be priced out of the homes that they've lived in for 20 or 30 years. California's fought against that. Prop 13 helps to make sure that it keeps it more affordable. Let's break down some math. So I did mention a few moments ago about special assessments and mellow roofs and maybe that freaks you out a little bit because you'd rather have the 1% tax rate than a 2.4% tax rate. Who doesn't agree with that? The good news is that those things will fall off over time. It's not a short time frame. That can be anywhere from 20 to 40 years from when the home is built. So if you're looking at a home built in the early 90s, it's possible that those have already fallen off or maybe doing that very soon. If you're looking at something built in 2020, guess what? You're probably gonna be waiting some time for those to fall off. Now, each individual bond falls off at a different time once the debt is fully paid off. So the more developed the area becomes, the faster those things fall off. So we don't necessarily as real estate agents have for you an exact time period when one will be paid off. However, the county can typically give us some sort of estimate as to when those will fall off. But again, keep in mind that 20 to 40 year range is typically what we're seeing. So if you're buying a home built in 2020, it's gonna be probably 20 years until you see that fall off. But the good news is when it does, that will drop your property tax down to the base rate of 1.04% and it will save you money on a monthly basis. So let's do some math here. Let's assume that you bought a house in Orange County, say 20 years ago for $200,000. That was at one point actually a realistic price point for Orange County, but let's assume 20 years ago you bought that for $200,000. Because of Prop 13, over the next 20 years, the assessed value for that home has only reached $297,000. That's because of a 2% cap on the appreciation every year for that tax basis. That home is probably actually worth $1.2 million now. Congrats to you, Mr. 55 plus. Now you've decided I want to make a move, but I don't wanna move because it's going to increase my property tax. Well, if you're coming from Orange County into Riverside County, you can now transfer that $297,000 tax basis into Riverside County. Traditionally, if you were to come here into the Temecula Valley and buy an average $600,000 price home, you would then be taxed at $600,000. I told you that the, the tax basis only goes up 2% a year. However, when a sale happens, it catches up to the actual sale price of the home. So if you bought a $600,000 home, you'd be taxed at 600,000. But according to Prop 60 and Prop 90, you can now transfer that in at the $297,000. That is going to be a large tax savings for you. And let me break that down. So your tax basis at 297,000 with an annual property tax rate would get you a tax bill of about $3,000 per year. Now, if you were to buy that $600,000 home, your tax bill at 1% would be $6,000 a year. That means if you transfer in that tax basis, you are now saving yourself $3,000 a year or about $250 a month. That is a huge savings, a huge advantage. Now to qualify for this, you need to be 55 or older, you or your spouse, you need to be in a qualifying county transferring into another qualifying county and you need to be buying a home that is of equal or lesser value than the home that you're selling. Now in the instance that you're moving from Orange County to Riverside County, that's pretty easy for you to do. And the only other kicker to this is that you can only use it once in your lifetime. So be sure that the next home you're buying is absolutely the home that you plan to be in long-term because if you ever move again, 
you will be stuck paying the new tax basis. So these are some props that help seniors and help you save some money on your tax bill. So that's it for the official breakdown of your property taxes here in the Temecula Valley. As I mentioned, it can vary greatly and it can increase your payment by hundreds of dollars per month. So I said it in the beginning, but it is very important that you're working with a real estate agent that knows the area that can show you if you are very monthly payment conscious, they should be able to identify you low tax area properties. They don't all have to be older. There are pockets of homes that are newly built that are at a lower tax rate because they're in a more developed area. There's some that are built in the 2000s that have already had some of those special assessments and Malarus fees fall off. So an experienced real estate agent should be able to guide you through that process. And I think a really good one will bring with you to every showing the actual tax rate and the actual monthly payment that you will be paying on any property. Because again, in the Temecula Valley, just crossing the street could cost you several hundred dollars a month. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed today's content. I know taxes are not everybody's favorite topic to talk about, but it is important because it will affect your monthly payment by a lot here in the area. So if you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button, leave a comment below any questions you have about property taxes here in the Temecula Valley. And as always, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. We'll see you guys next time.